Okay, I want to start this video off. It's going to be quite different tonight. Um, on the internet, there are so many videos where people claim that they have died and came back or they died and went to heaven or they died and went to hell. And then there's one video of this young man saying that he died and he talked to the devil, right? I have a person here that allegedly got sick when she was younger and she medically died and she's got her own experience that she want to briefly talk about. But before I get started, I want to start out with a scripture taken from the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter, the 27th to the 28th verse, and it reads as follows. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, the 28th verse says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So when the Bible said it is appointed unto men once to die after this to judgment, why is it that so many people claim to have died? Even multiple times. The young man that claimed this, that he saw the devil say he died twice. But according to the Bible, it is appointed man wants to die. So why is it that all of these people are claiming that they died and that they went to heaven and came back or they went to hell and came back or they talked to God or the devil? But I want to introduce this young lady to you. She's shy. She don't want to be before the camera. So I'm going to call her Kay. So Kay, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are oh, you? I'm doing superb, superb. Now, good. you claim to have, you know, died medically and um, you came back. Okay. And I'm just going to let you freely um, introduce yourself um, and then, you know, go ahead with your testimony. So about how old was it? when you had this experience and what happened? I was about 14 years old and it was in the month of August, a couple of weeks before school was to start in September. So I apparently got a, a summer cold. I had a sore throat, nothing major. It was a little scratchy. And I said, you know, let me just go to the store and get some cough drops. I went to the store, got some sucrets. You know, young, I had to take this, you know, the sucrets. And as the days went on, my throat got more and more scratchy and it became really sore to the point that I couldn't swallow. If I swallowed, it felt like glass. And I actually had a cup next to me. Um, I had to spit in a cup because my throat was just too sore. So my mom had made an appointment for me. They said, bring her in right away. So by the time I got to the doctor's office, my, I had a fever. It was really, really high. They didn't know what was going on. So they had to have me admitted in the hospital. So as the days went on, I got worse and worse and worse and worse. I, the fever was just uncontrollable. So what I remember is my parents would come to the hospital to see me, you know, my sisters, my brothers, they're coming to see me. But one night, apparently I was really, really sick and it was a Catholic hospital. It was called St. Joseph's Hospital. And I remember I was laying in the bed in and out of consciousness and nobody was there. It was just me at the time. And a priest came in the room. He had on his long uh, black robe and he had a, a small Bible in his hand. And I'm seeing him faintly through my eyes, and he was reading me my last rites. 
And I remember him reading uh, Psalms 23. I remember him saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And next thing I know, I'm walking in this tunnel. And it was just me. I was walking in this tunnel and there was a light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm just walking real slow towards this light. And I'm looking around and because I'm the only one there, I'm not knowing what's going to happen, where I'm going. And um, so there's this really bright light at the end of a tunnel. So as I'm walking, it, w it was just kind of scary. It was just, you know, it was almost as if I was a trance, like something was pulling me towards this light. And then I stopped walking and something, someone told me to go back. So I stopped and I turned around and I started walking back. So then next thing you know, I wake up in my hospital bed. The nurse comes in there was a few nurses in my room with me and there was a few doctors there and they said, oh my goodness, you're back. We lost you for a minute. And I had no clue what was going on. And they told me that I had died and then I, I came back. So uh, later on, my parents, they came up to the hospital and that was that was the news, that was the talk that they told me we had lost your daughter, but she came back. So that was that was my experience. So when you when you before you walked through that tunnel, because I know you was telling me at one time that you saw yourself laying in the bed. Yes. You say you saw your yourself mm -hmm. and you saw the nurses and and you can hear what they were saying. Yes. OK, so when you came back and you said that to him, how did they react to you and what did you say to them? Well, I really I was more confused because of what I had just went through. So I really didn't say too much because, mind you, I was still I was still sick. You know, I was still in and out of consciousness. I heard them. I seen them around my bed. But um, it's not like I had a conversation with them, mm -hmm. but they were just talking about me, um, about losing me and me coming back. What were they saying? They were saying, you're lucky to be alive. I can't believe it. This is a miracle mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So, so when you enter the tunnel... Mm -hmm. You said that you saw a light at the end of the tunnel. It was a light at the end of the tunnel. So you was walking in darkness? Everything was completely dark? The the sides of the tunnel on each side of me, it was dim. It was very dim. So it wasn't pitch black with a light, but it was a very dim light on each side of the tunnel. As I'm walking through the tunnel, the light was dim. But what caught my attention, I was walking towards that bright light. So your eyes are focused on the light. You didn't see your feet. You didn't see your body. You didn't see anything else. You didn't hear nothing. It was just complete silence. It was complete silence. And I was I was walking alone. And how did you feel? Was it was it peaceful or was it just, you know, where am I at? <laughs> it was more like where where am I? You know, what is this place? Where am I going? What is that light for? Why is that light so bright? But yet I was walking towards it. It was just as if I was being drawn towards it for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I was slowly walking towards that light. Now, there's some people say that they had that experience and it was so peaceful that they didn't want to come back. Would you say that that's what you felt? And what did that voice sound like that told you it's not your time or to go back? I can't say it felt peaceful because I was still a young girl and there was a little bit of fear. There was a little bit of un definitely a lot of uncertainty. 
So, and mind you, that light at the end of that tunnel, it was black at the end of the tunnel, but with a bright, sh uh, 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 bright light shining through that darkness. Um, the voice itself, it was a male voice. It wasn't a strong voice yelling, you know, like, go back. It was just like, uh, you know, like, go back. Like, you don't, it's not your time. That voice didn't say it's not your time, but it was just saying, go back. So, and that's what I did. I turned around and I came back. And when, as I was walking back, immediately, it was as if I'm in that same bed. The priest was still standing there. And the nurses were there at that time. So what I find interesting is, is when they told you, when, it, when that voice told you to go back. And you turned around and went back without thinking. Yeah. And you walked back into consciousness. So it's like one moment you walked out of consciousness because you were in this tunnel. You don't know how you got there. You don't know where you were. You were confused. And then this voice tells you to go back. You turn around and go back. How do you know where you were going to, or you were just you were just walking? I had you, no you, idea. You just obeyed that voice. I just obeyed that and voice. And you walked back into consciousness. I walked back into consciousness. Maybe semi-consciousness because I say that because mind you, it's almost like as if it could have possibly possibly have been an out of body experience. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I got up like something in me got up out of my body that was laying in that bed went and walked in that tunnel towards that light. Something told me to go back. And that person that was walking in that tunnel went back, climbed back in the body in that hospital bed mm -hmm. and awakened. Mm -hmm. So after that experience, has, 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 were you, did you feel different? Have your life, had your life changed or... You felt empowered or felt special? How did you feel after you started recovering or came back? And I understand that you were young, but as you got older and you really thought about that, what came to your mind? I felt special because you don't hear of too many people. I mean, you, you hear stories, but I never thought it would be, I would be a person that would experience something like that. I actually died, and it's medically documented, and I came back. So you weren't just having a dream? I was not having a dream. And so the, the equipment didn't malfunction, and there was no they, malfunction. They, they, misread, they just misread the diagnosis, they didn't and misread anything. you were asleep, and there was no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't just sleep. <laughs> I was dead. <laughs> Okay, so it goes back to that scripture, the appointed man wants to die. So that defies what the Bible says. So what would you say to some people that say you didn't die because that goes against the scriptures? That's a tough one because a lot of people have experienced that. And yes, they did die. Mm. I mean, yes, it is appointed man wants to die, but... Why are people experiencing these things? Why did I experience what I experienced? Well, some people would say it could have been the medication. That priest was reading me my last rites. So you know and definitely... And when people, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, like I said, I'm young. I'm, you know, I'm just this young girl, sick, very sick. Okay, so you had no former thoughts of heaven and hell or the Bible or God or anything of that nature you're 14 years old right and you you now have knowledge of a tunnel and someone telling you to go back right so that's your personal experience that's my personal so experience. it's not like something you've been indoctrinated to believe no absolutely not as an adult absolutely not okay nope i was young um about to be a freshman in high school i believe about a week or two before that, uh, before I got sick, I was in marching band, going to marching band, uh, 
practice, so I was um, definitely not aware of what was going to take place or I where I had been indoctrinated into anything. I got sick and I died. And that priest was reading me my last rites. And they're not going to send a priest um, to come to a patient's bedside to read them their last rites if they didn't feel that this is it. You know, this person is about to die. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's the interview. And I know you, you're tired, you're ready to go. There's nothing else to say. But I'm going to end it right here. Um, feedback, tell me what you think. Tell me what your thoughts on her experience as a 14 year old that got sick. And I jokingly said to her earlier, You sure that wasn't COVID? <laughs> but then again, we don't know because COVID came out of nowhere, right? So share your thoughts and opinions. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section and I would make sure that she would see this. Um, but I just felt it was, you know, necessary to to have her to share her experience as a 14-year-old uh, that medically died. Priest was reading her last right. And I think you told me one time that when you, that you saw, heard the priest or the nurses say, and she's so young. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And this is when you were leaving your body or coming back? Leaving. And you knew exactly where they were standing and what they were doing? Yeah. And you told them when you woke up, right? Yeah, yeah, they seen me, um, you know, when I woke up, that's when they were basically shocked. They were shocked when they seen me, I, you know, my movement, my, my eyes opened. And you told them what you saw and heard? I asked them what happened because okay. I was, you know, I was not conscious. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering why are all the nurses in that priest standing there? Mm -hmm. I remember the priest before I died. I remember just the priest. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, but when I woke up, there were nurses and everybody standing there, more than likely because it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, all right, Kay, I appreciate that testimony. And we'll just wait for the comments to see what people have to say, any questions that they have for you. And then maybe we can do this again, okay? Sounds good. So feedback, tell me what you think. Until next time, I'm fearless. <laughs>